we are going to give just a minute or so for people to join. Okay, I think we've let our people in. So good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Connie Versellas, um, Head of Economic Development for the City of Sunnyvale. And with me is uh, Maria Rodriguez, the City's Economic Development Specialist. Um, thank you for joining us today. We're really excited to be here with you today. And the goal for today is we wanna teach you how to make your website work for you. Um, the city is very excited to be hosting this event uh, with our partners. And we'd like to thank Google for being a big, partner in helping this happen um, for us. We also like to thank our two other partners, um, the Silicon uh, Valley Small Business Development Center and also the Sunnyvale Chamber of Commerce that without their support, we wouldn't be able to um, make this happen. Also with me, I'm really excited and pleased that um, the city's mayor, Mayor Larry uh, Klein is also here. And uh, Mayor Klein is a huge supporter of our small business community. Um, and I'm thrilled that he's here and uh, Larry, I Mayor Klein, I'm sorry, I think you'd like to say a few words. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, Connie. Uh, and I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, thanks for joining uh, another great, which I'm sure it's going to be great, uh, special business seminars. You know, uh, making your website work is critical in today's world. Uh, and so I, I really, you know, look forward to hearing what's what what we have to talk about, uh, you know, uh, and I want to just definitely thank Google for being our partner in this and putting on these sessions. Uh, this is one of the many ways that the city tries to support its small businesses, which is the lifeblood of, of our city at the end of the day. Uh, but, you know, and I have my own website, my eatsunnyvale.com, where I've been promoting our local, local restaurants. Uh, and so there's good information for me here too. So, so I'll be attending as much as I can, but, but I want to thank everyone for joining today and hopefully everyone will get a lot out of this, but enough about me, you know, everyone wants to hear from, from Israel Cerna. And so I will go ahead and pass, pass it on to you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Mayor. I'm definitely interested in checking out that, uh, that website of yours because I always, I often say that food is my compass when I'm traveling. And so I'm always looking for places to eat. So I'm looking forward to checking that site out. Um, so thank you for that example too. Um, so welcome back everybody. If this is, if you've been a part of this webinar series, um, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you for, for joining us. This is now the third webinar. Of our, of our series. And this webinar it, today is focused on your website. So we're gonna talk a lot about what makes for a great website, the things that Google looks for when they're ranking a website. That's like the number one question I get asked is, what is Google or how does Google determine which websites to show in the search field? So you're gonna learn a lot about just what Google looks for but also if you are in the beginning stages of launching your website, or maybe you already launched a website, we're gonna be talking about you know, what makes um, for a good website, right? So there are obviously gonna be things that as users or as um, customers that we look for in websites. And we're gonna talk about what are those things that people look for when, when they land on your website. So again, I'd, I'd like to thank all of our partners, especially the mayor for, for having me once again, uh, with you, I'm excited to be here with you this morning. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with the Grow With Google program, I kind of want to just take a few seconds to talk to you a little bit about it. Um, the Grow With Google program helps um, people like you to grow their digital skills to be able to grow your online presence. So we do this through um, resources that can be, um, uh, be accessible to you at grow.google forward slash small businesses but also through webinars and trainings like the one that you're participating in today. So with that in mind, let me just quickly, once again, introduce myself. Um, my contact information is on the screen. So if you have any questions um, after the webinar, um, I know Maria and Connie get questions from attendees um, post-webinar. 
feel free to reach out to me as well if you have any questions regarding the topic that I'm going to be covering today. Um, so I'm actually joining you virtually from my home office here in West Hollywood, California. That's the beauty of technology these days is that we can be anywhere, right? So I'm excited to be here and like I said, um, to be able to offer you this third webinar today. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. And I want to start by talking about why is it important for you to have an online presence or the importance of having an online presence? So today, uh, more than ever, um, especially during this last year, um, businesses are being discovered by customers online and in some cases, even driving sales through their websites. So if you have an e-commerce site, I'm going to have some tips for you as well. Or if you're thinking about launching an e-commerce site, we're going to talk about that later on. Uh, recent events, as we all know, this last year has really changed the way that we interact with businesses. So a year ago, many businesses found themselves um, not knowing how to communicate with their customers because many businesses up until then didn't have a website or maybe had not optimized their website to be um, able to provide customer service during those times. So we've learned a lot this last year. Um, I've learned and talked to a lot of businesses that um, really um, ended up um, having to focus exclusively on their online presence during this last year because it was the only way they were able to one, communicate with their customers, but also sell to their customers. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna cover, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of what makes a really good website. So there's gonna be things that I talked to you about today that are just things that are standard in the industry and things that people look for when they land on a website. So before I do that, I wanna launch a quick poll just so that I can learn a little bit of mo about more about who is in the audience. So my first poll question is, do you have a business website? So how many of you currently have a business website? Um, if you're not, that's okay. You know, you may be in the research stage of, of launching your website. You may even have a website and you're just maybe looking to improve it. So that's okay. Just let me know how many of you currently count with a website. Okay. So it's looking like, I'm gonna give it a few more seconds to give all the attendees a chance to find the poll and then also um, answer the poll question. And there's no right or wrong answer in this case. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. So basically we're looking at, which this is good actually. I normally have a lot more people who don't have a website on, on these calls or on these webinars. So this is good. So it looks like about, 67% of you already count with the website and then about 33% of you don't have a website. So that's good. That's definitely helpful for me. My second question for you is if you answered yes, that you do have a website, uh, what are you looking to improve if anything? Are you here to, um, because you're looking to relaunch a new website, which is, you know, believe it or not, a lot of people are actually taking the time now to revamp their website, maybe they're getting more usage of their website and they're realizing, you know, I need to, um, you know, maybe rebrand it a little bit, maybe go to a different template. Uh, so uh, the question or the answers are you, you're, you're here because maybe you're thinking about relaunching, maybe you're just looking to optimize it or spruce it up a little bit, or just here to learn best practices, which is actually the, the number one answer is 75% um, of you are here to learn best practices, which is good. Um, and then 17% of you want to are here because you want to learn how to spruce up your website. And then 8% 8, 8 of you are here because you're actually looking to relaunch your website. So I'm going to go ahead and share the results. Okay, cool. And then just the last question. It is... Who is going to, or who is managing or going to manage your website? Okay, so is it yourself? Is it you and maybe like an internal team member? Maybe you count with the marketing team. Maybe it's you and, and a nephew or a son or a daughter. Um, and how many of you are looking to outsource your website? So I'm just curious to learn a little bit more about that. So let's give it a few more seconds. Okay, 
So this is actually really interesting. Um, so about 73% of you are saying that you're gonna be managing your website, which is great. 27% of you will do it with the support of somebody on your team or maybe a family member. And then 0% of you are outsourcing. And that's the part that's actually surprising me. And I'm actually really pleasantly surprised to actually see this because a lot of what I'm gonna talk about today and share with you is how much the industry has changed in the last 10 years that has allowed us to really take control over your website. So seeing a 0% on this poll actually makes me really happy, believe it or not. So thank you for, for sharing that. That's super you know, insightful for me um, to be able to um, see that, okay? So let's take a few minutes to talk about, um, you know, let's just review a website. And what I want to do is, as we look at this, right, I, I, oftentimes what happens is when we, when we want to talk about web design, oftentimes people think about the overall template and the look and feel of a website. And they may also be thinking about the graphics and the layouts that appear consistently throughout the website, like in the example that you see on the screen. But it's important to note that design is just one component of web design, okay? Within the graphic template, there are um, lots of common elements that appear on most websites, things that you as a consumer are probably familiar with, but subconsciously don't pay too much attention to. So an example of this is the header, right? Which is the, the, the portion here at the top. And usually what happens is, or usually typically what we see is that our logos are typically on the left-hand side, and often is the case um, that it is on the left-hand side because that's how we, we read, right? We read from left to right, so we put the most important piece of our branding on the left-hand side, which is our logo, okay? Then there's the, um, the, uh, the, the menu bar here, which is usually right um, below, the so the navigation bar. And the navigation bar is usually horizontal, or if you're looking at a mobile device, it may appear as um, what we call in the industry a hamburger menu, because it looks like a, like a hamburger. So this is, again, something typical that we now expect to see on websites, as well as, um, sorry, the footer section, okay? So in the footer section, usually that is where you have copyright information. Usually there's links to your social media platforms, um, a, a section for you to be able to collect um, emails for your newsletter. So again, I know that when I land on a website, if I'm looking to subscribe to their newsletter, I know that I need to scroll all the way down because typically that sign up newsletter is on the bottom section of the website. Or if I'm on a mobile device, I'm used to seeing that hamburger menu. And I know that if I click that hamburger menu, that it's going to be a drop down. So Again, these are all just elements of a website that have become typical, okay? So in today's presentation, we're gonna talk about six characteristics of a great website. So remember that a website is not all about design and that a great website should follow these principles. So let's quickly review each of them before we take a deeper dive, okay? So a website typically, and it's always recommended actually, that it should be goal oriented, okay? So how will having a website help you grow your business? Okay, so oftentimes people launch a website to launch a website and really don't have any goals in mind or don't have any um, real calls to action on their website, which you know really makes it very difficult for you to be able to measure the success of your website. So it's important to be goal oriented and to write down or at least have your goals in mind of what you're looking to get out of your website. And that's, we're gonna talk a little bit deeper about that later. Second, it should be um, organized and easy to search. So do the menu options make sense, okay? It should also be useful. What does this mean? Um, it means, or what we're asking is, does your site provide useful or relevant content? Your website should also be functional. So it's important that your website offer a great experience no matter what device your um, customers are on because that's the one thing that we actually don't have control over, right? We don't know if our customer is going to pick up an iPhone, if they're going to pick up a tablet, if they're going to pick up a desktop to search for you. So we want to make sure that whatever device they pick up 
to search for you or, or navigate your website, that it offers a positive experience. And we're going to talk a lot about how templates nowadays help, um, can help you take care of that issue. Okay. A good website should be intuitive to use and functional um, on any device. So I talked a little bit about that. And then last but not least, that your website should be discoverable. So it should be found in search, okay? We're gonna talk um, a little bit about SEO, which means search engine optimization and how you can, especially for those of you that are already have a website, you know, you may be asking yourself like, how can I make it so that my website appears higher in the rankings or in the search rankings? Um, this is where I'm gonna have some really good advice for you, okay? So when we're creating a website, you have to start by thinking about the goal of the site, okay? What is the purpose of this? Now, if you already have a website, the question here is, does your website have a purpose and is it producing the results that you had hoped for? I often hear a lot of business owners who are disappointed with their website because, believe it or not, and I hate to say this, but some business owners just think that launching a website and having it online is, is uh, that once you launch, that it's, that's all you have to do. But what you're gonna learn today is that it's important that we continually um, update our website, that we're uploading content that's relevant so that people can uh, return to your website, that people know exactly what to do when they land on your website. I often see so many times that business owners don't even have like a shop now, a buy now, a learn more. You know, they're missing this opportunity to include a call to action, which makes it hard for people to, when they land on your website, to know what to do, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna talk a lot about that um, in the next section. So if you're at the beginning stages, or again, if you're revamping, okay, to start, um, it's good for you to ask, what do you want out of your website? What do you want it to do? So think of your site as a tool that can help you achieve your business goals. Now, these goals, depend on the type of business you're running, but here are some examples, okay? There may be some of you on this um, call who wanna build a website because you wanna grow your brand awareness. And that's a very common thing, right? For businesses to launch a website is they wanna be able to be discoverable and be able to get their brand out there. Um, some of you are here because you wanna learn how to be found online and generate leads through search. Some of you want to make sales or want to jump onto the e-commerce um, opportunity and start to offer an e-commerce capability on your website. Now, some of you, you know, may be on here because you want to use your website as an opportunity to engage with customers. And I have um, background in customer loyalty and customer retention. And I often talk about loyalty, loyalty programs and referral programs. Um, but also um, utilizing your website to be able to engage with your existing customers. So some of you may want to launch a website or one of your goals is to use your website to be able to engage with your existing customers. Now, some of you may also want to have a website because you want to use it as a way to attract employees. So you may have a job posting on your website you may have an about us section, you know, where we can learn a little bit more about your company culture. We can learn to maybe um, get to see who your staff members are, who your leadership team is. So these are all things that when people are searching for jobs or are applying for a job you're offering, a lot of us are going to your website to do research and to find out a little bit more about, you know, company culture, benefits, um, you know, if you do team outings, these are all things that people are looking for when they're, when they're in the hiring process, okay? And then last but not least, um, providing customer support. And this could be through like an FAQ section, a community board, you may have a customer support line. So your website may be the place where you point people to if they are needing additional support or um, pointing them to those frequently asked questions, which, um, it is a really good tool, by the way, if you are looking to improve your SEO or your search engine optimization, having an FAQ section on your website is critical because you're not only helping your customers with their questions, but you're also letting Google know that you are a fountain of resource or a, a fountain of information that 
has answers to a lot of those frequently asked questions, okay? The next thing that we wanna think about with when we're developing a website or as we spruce up our website is think about our target audience and who we're building this website for, okay? Oftentimes we get really stuck in our mind about what we want out of the website. Just fair, right? It's at the end of the day, it is our business, but we have to take a step back and think about how is the customer gonna engage with my website? Are they going to find the information that I'm uploading useful? Are they gonna be able to navigate the website in a way that makes it for, um, you know, provides a positive experience? So I think it's also important that um, you not build a website for everyone, okay? I often ask business owners like, you know, who's your audience? Like, who are you targeting? And a, frequently, a frequent answer that I get is they say, well, everyone. I mean, I would love everyone to be my customer. And, and that's, you know, very ambitious. And obviously we all want that, but um, I think it's always better for you to focus on a niche or the people, um, a profile or, um, well, we call this in the industry, the ideal client profile. Um, so, you know, it would be a really good exercise for you to think about that and, and write it down or maybe work with somebody on your team to come up with a profile or these like avatars of who we think our customers are. And when you do that, what you're going to find is you're going to start to understand a little bit more about who your target audience is, but like, what are they looking for, right? So if I'm a Depart, if I'm, let's just say I sell um, sporting equipment, right? And I'm particularly selling kids sporting equipment, right? My ideal client isn't necessarily the five or seven year old. It's really the parent who I'm going to be targeting, right? So I'm going to customize my website so that if I am a parent or if a, a parent does arrive on my website, that I'm providing them with everything that they need um, to be able to purchase learn about my products or services or a way for them to connect with me, okay? So I do recommend if you haven't done this already to build out, um, and we go back and forth with the terminology, but some people call them avatars. Some people call them ideal client profiles. Either way, the exercise is for you to be able to build out some um, characteristics of who you're targeting. So that way you can build out your website with those people in mind, okay? The other thing that we want to make sure that we do is once we launch or as we think about launching is how are we going to measure the success of our website, right? And this may be easier for some and harder for others. Um, the easy part of this is that we have the opportunity nowadays to leverage tools like Google Analytics, which I'm going to talk about momentarily, that can actually help us measure the data or the metrics behind the usage of our website. But offline, one thing that you can also do to measure the success of your website is to train your staff or train yourself to ask your customers, how did you hear about us? Have you been to our website? You know, do you find, did you find what you needed on our website? Um, what you're going to, what you're going to find or often is the case is that most people may start their purchase um, online, meaning they're going to go to your website to do research. They're going to go to your website to find out if you have the inventory that they're looking for. And in most cases, they're going to complete that purchase offline. So that's a really good opportunity if you do come across those customers who come in and say to you, hey, by the way, um, I'm here because I saw you have X product on your website. I was just wondering if you have it in stock. That's a great way for you to make a mental note that, you are starting to drive traffic through your website or that people are coming in having researched your website. So make it a habit if you don't already, you know, whether it's through a survey, through, um, you know, when you pick up the phone or when somebody comes in to ask, how did you hear about us, okay? So quick chat, um, I wanna take advantage of our chat feature. So, um, um, if you can let me know in the chat, um, how many of you are tracking your website analytics or see the value in tracking website analytics? So if you guys can let me know in the chat, or I think there's a Q&A section, just let me know there if you are already tracking your website analytics or see the value of tracking your website analytics. 
So earlier I mentioned Google Analytics. Um, so Google Analytics is a free tool that can help you to better understand your audience and their activity on your website. So this information will help you to make more strategic decisions for your business. Remember that your platform provider, so depending on where you, uh, depending on the platform that you're using, so you may be on Shopify, you may be on Wix, on WordPress, these platforms do provide you with analytics to your website. What I'm talking, what I'm going to be talking to you about today within Google Analytics is that Google Analytics is going to take those, um, that data to the next level. And I'm going to cover a couple of things momentarily. But let me just quickly look at the chat. So looks like um, so somebody says that they, they're having a hard time understanding the website analytics. And I, I understand there's a lot of data, right, that, um, that uh, is made available. And, and in fact, I'm going to go ahead and make a point here to say that, you know, nowadays it's not, it's no longer uh, an issue of getting the data. The problem now is that there's like big data, right? And so now we have to learn how to like interpret that. So we're going to cover a little bit of those tips later for those of you that are having a hard time understanding what to do with those analytics or what to do with that data. So thank you for, for um, answering my question in the Q&A chat. So within Google um, data or Google analytics, I should say, again, I'm going to remind you that you, most of your platforms already come with a website analytics section. What I'm talking about now is Google analytics, which is an external um, um, Google product that you can connect to your website to be able to track um, deeper um, analytics, okay? So for example, with Google Analytics, you can learn about the search term and the sources that are driving the most traffic to your website, okay? So you can actually see the keywords that people typed in search before they landed on your website. So this is gonna give you valuable data as to how people are looking for you the types of keywords that they're typing and the um, and then once they land on your website, you can also track um, you know where or what type of content they're consuming. So oftentimes we may upload a video, we may upload a recipe or a different content to our website, but we don't track you know what's happening or who's consuming it. The beauty of Google Analytics is that it can help you understand not only like the percentage of people that are consuming it, but where are those uh, consumers coming from, okay? Um, you can also um, evaluate the channels that are driving the most conversion. So whether you're driving traffic organically or you're driving traffic from, let's say some of your social media platforms or through Google ads, you'll be able to measure and track those analytics. So here's an example of what the um, back end of the Google Analytics looks like. In this particular case, this is um, a report that's looking at our demographics. So within the demographics, as you can see on the screen, you can, you can see who the audience is. So what is the makeup of, of, of your audience? So earlier on, when I was talking to you about creating those avatars or those ideal client profiles, um, this is a good example to actually confirm whether or not you are attracting who you think you are. Um, I actually have an example or know of a business. Um, they're called Wicked Good Cupcakes, and they're out of Boston. And they are an online um, business that sells cupcakes. Okay, Now, it's a mother and daughter duo. And when they launched their website, their e-commerce site, I should say, they thought that their um, ideal client or that their demographic was going to be women ranging between 35 and 49 years old. So they build out a whole website campaign with this profile or avatar in mind. Now, after plugging in their Google Analytics to their website and measuring and tracking the analytics for, for um, a while, they actually learned that their most profitable or their most um, their frequent purchaser was actually women between ages 25 and 34. So there was a big difference, right? So 35 and 49, 25 to 34. So this led them to actually um, uh, revise their marketing and outreach efforts to reach this demographic that they had now uncovered, right? 
So sometimes, you know, we go into our businesses, maybe with an understanding of, you know, this is who I want to target. And then there's actually, when you, when, when you launch your website, you may come to learn that actually you're attracting a different type of consumer. Um, you know, it may be, you know, they could have maybe discovered that I were, that I was actually males. I don't know, you know, but this is the beauty of like Google analytics, right? Is that you can, um, um, see this and, and like you're seeing on the screen, it's a full report that can show you this. Okay. Connie, were you going to say something? No. Okay, cool. Sorry. I thought I heard, uh, I thought I heard you say something. Okay. So um, you're going to get a copy of the presentation, but if you haven't already connected your Google Analytics, um, I invite you to take advantage of that. It's free. Um, you do have to connect your Google Analytics account with your website. There is a ton of great uh, tutorials online and even on Google that can walk you through the process. It's not um, anything too technical, um, thankfully. And so it's something that you can easily do if you, if you haven't done so already. So let's talk about the organization of a website. So there are people out there nowadays that actually spend or have a career out of um, building websites that provide a user experience, a great user experience, I should say. So this is really important, um, especially as we're gonna learn, um, for those of you that count with a high percentage of mobile, uh, website visitors, you're going to want to um, pay close attention to that as well. The pro tip that I'm going to leave you with before I continue is that when you um, build a website that's well organized, that's easy to navigate, it's not only going to provide a great user experience for the customer, but actually Google is going to reward you for that well or for, for being organized. So remember, Google essentially is like a second pair of eyes that's going to look at your website and it's going to read it the way that a customer would. So if Google's having a hard time, you know, indexing your web pages because they don't really understand the organization or maybe how you've um, named some of your pages, Google's going to have a hard time indexing them. And so therefore, it's not going to help you with your search engine optimization. So the pro tip here is, Take the time and effort to build out the organization of your website so that Google can reward you in the long run. So here's a um, great exercise for those of you who are looking to launch a website or revamp your website. I always recommend that you start with a plan by using what we call um, an information architecture plan. This sounds a little bit jargony and, and it may be a little bit intimidating that I say that, but it's called um, IA in the industry, right? So it's basically for, you know, in layman's term, you're basically building out a, a, um, um, a, a roadmap of your website. So that way you can track exactly the content that you're going to upload, right? So on your screen, you're seeing an example of a jewelry store. So if I was a jeweler, right, and building out my website, I would start with my homepage, which is the number, the the, the page that people are going to land on when they land, when they type in your, your URL, right? Now, depending on your industry, and again, these are just some of the best practices that we recommend, right? You will have an about us. Believe it or not, people nowadays are going out of their way to shop with not only small businesses, but they're also really wanting to know more about who they're shopping with, right? So this is where your company culture, where you can share more about your values. So if I was, you know, a jeweler and I maybe, you know, was conscious about where my diamonds were coming from, I may, I may write that in my about us page that, you know, you are sourcing your, your diamonds or your jewelry from, you know, uh, trusted uh, resources. People are looking for that type of information. Um, I recently did an exercise with a small business owner. It's a restaurant here in, um, in Long Beach and it's a Mexican restaurant and they sell seafood, but their, their, the seafood style that they're preparing the food is, is from like a very specific region of Mexico. And we made sure that in the about us page that they talked about their hometown, about where they were from. And it's actually attracting a lot of people because they want to support people from the region or they are, um, um, they really love that style of cooking. 
So take advantage of that About Us page, okay? And then depending on your website, you may have a product page, right? So here you can see how well organized it is in that they have a product section and then they have these subcategories for the different types of, of uh, um, jewelry that they sell. So they've got the rings, the watches, and then the necklaces. And then they also have a contact page. So again, this exercise you can do, I usually do it with like a PowerPoint um, or a slide deck. I usually um, build it out this way so that way I can format, move things around. What, whatever is easiest for you, I just recommend that you start with a plan like this and then build it out before you, um, before you start uh, the web design. So here's um, um, another example. And what I love about this example is that as soon as I land on this website, I know exactly what it is and what they're selling, okay? In this particular case, what I love is that they're actually using industry jargon or industry terms as the, as the header for the different pages, okay? I don't quilt, but if I did, I'm sure that a lot of these terms would make sense for me and would allow me to sort of navigate the website in a very easy way. Um, and I like the way that it's you know, framed out, right? So that these categories are easy to read. So think about your industry and think about those terms or those things that people are looking for. And I would recommend that you organize and name the pages with these things in mind, okay? So let's talk about um, creating um, a great experience on your website. So you heard me talk earlier about, um, you know, if you find that you are attracting a high percentage of mobile users, which in general across the board, you know, more than 50% of all web traffic nowadays are coming from smartphone and tablets because, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I'm like sitting in front of a computer and actually searching for something on my phone. I mean, it's silly, but that's how we're doing it these days. We're multitasking sometimes with devices. But the, 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 the point here is that mobile usage is, is, is up. And so we have to make sure that our websites are offering a positive experience for those mobile uh, visitors. I will mention that if you are on any of these platforms like Shopify, Wix, WordPress, most of these platforms, and I would say probably at this point, more than 99% of their, their templates um, are mobile friendly, meaning they've already built a template that will recognize the device that the user is using and automatically adjust itself to provide a more positive experience for that user. So if you have a website, a good exercise that I recommend that you do is test your website on a tablet and test your website on a mobile device and then compare it to the desktop experience. And you know, you for yourself, you know, figure out like, is there you know, consistency between all three platforms? Is my uh, website harder to read on a mobile device? If it is, it may mean that maybe you haven't enabled the mobile friendly option on that template, or it may just mean that you don't have a mobile friendly template. Okay. So I recommend that exercise because of just the high number of mobile users that are using their mobile devices to land on our website. So let's talk a little bit about content because what happens here. And one of the things that I like to clarify when I talk about, and when you hear me say things like, you know, it's important for you guys to optimize your website or to upload content as frequently as possible. It can be a little bit confusing for people because when I say the term content, to most people, the first thing that comes to mind is text or words, okay? And yes, text and words are important because within those texts and, key and, and words, we can utilize keywords, right? which is another term that I'm gonna clarify in a minute. But when I say content, and when we talk about making sure that you're optimizing your website as much as possible or uploading new content or keeping your website fresh with content, this is what I mean. I mean that, yes, it's important to add text and words, but also content can also mean imagery. It could also mean videos. It could also mean downloadable docs. It can also mean FAQ sections, okay? 
So with images, if I am a business owner that offers different products, I may have a clothing line, I may have a coffee line, whatever it is, right? It's important to have images of these, uh, of these products. So images are a great way for you to um, keep your website fresh. Furthermore, remember that Google can't read an image. So it's important that when you do upload an image, that you take advantage of that alt text option, right? So you can actually tell Google on the description what that image is. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna help Google when it scans your website, it's not only gonna scan the words, but it's also gonna scan the image description. This is why when you do Google searches and you go to the images tab, this is why all those images appear. It's because all of those people have added a description to that image, which tells Google that um, lets Google know what that product or image is. And it, it's just helping Google do its job better, okay? So again, you know, content can mean imagery. It can mean downloadable PDFs. It can mean, I, I know some businesses that also have, um, you know, uh, forms or calculators. You know, these are all things that are content related that can help you provide a, a positive experience. So if you're struggling with content, okay, or you are looking to um, check to see if your keyword list is made up of the right keywords, you can use Google Trends, okay? And I'm gonna talk a little bit about Google Trends, but before I do that, let me clarify what I mean with keywords. So in general, I recommend that as a business owner that you keep a list of 10 to 15 keywords or phrases that are related to your business. So if I'm a coffee shop owner that specializes in coffees from Mexico, part of my keyword list would be Mexican coffees, coffees from Mexico, Chiapas, Oaxaca, things that are related to my industry or to my product. And I'm gonna do and utilize this list as much as possible, not only throughout my website, but also in my content and in my social media platform so that Google starts to recognize these keywords and phrases with my business. So think about your business and think about those 10 to 15 keywords that either describe your business or that in your mind are keywords that people are typing to find your business, okay? Now, Google Trends in this particular case, and this is a great exercise, is that you can utilize Google Trends to see the popularity of that keyword or search term, okay? So not too long ago, and actually I talked a little bit about this in one of our presentations on, um, on uh, I think it was like the first presentation. Um, I talked about how I did an exercise with a local business in San Jose, and it was a hair salon. And in that conversation, I learned that um, hair loss was uh, a, a big issue, right? Uh, this particular salon and salons across the country actually had been dealing with customers that are dealing with hair loss. And so come to find out this hair salon that I was working with also offered um, hair salon, pro uh, sorry, um, hair loss treatment um, products. And so we, we did an exercise where we typed in hair loss just to see what that keyword or the popularity of that keyword. And as it turns out, it was not only popular or highly used in their region, but it was actually a term that was being used throughout the country. So I invite you to use Google Trends to learn about trends, but then also find out if um, that keyword list or those phrases that you're using are highly used um, by searchers, okay? So let's talk about the functionality of your website. So when I talk about functionality, it means that if I land on your website, I wanna know what else can I do on your website? Am I able to search for terms or items within your website? So this may be something that could be useful if you have a large catalog of products. Maybe you have a fall, winter, summer line and people are looking for something very specific that you offer a search option within your website. So this is not on Google. This is a search option on your website. People can enter the product name, the color that they're looking for, a particular size. 
and your website will be able to show them what they're looking for. Okay, so this has become a really um, important tool for a lot of business owners because this also gives them an opportunity to learn how they're searching for things or the popularity of a product. So this may give you further insight about the popularity of a particular product. So you may find when you're studying the analytics on the back end that there's one particular item that has the highest search. That's good data and good intel to have, right? You may also have, um, depending on your, on your business, online forms, right? So this is very common with consultants or um, people who you know, require um, uh, a consulting session before a purchase. Online forms are really popular. Obviously, this online store one is, is pretty self-explanatory, but you know, we do like to see that shopping cart option when we land just to make sure that we know that your site is shoppable. So if you are an e-commerce business or offering e-commerce as a component of your website, make sure that that shopping cart is um, easily discoverable on your website so that when somebody lands, they know that they can shop your website. And then online tools. Um, this, an example of this is, you know, I may be selling specialty coffee and I may be selling it by the pound and it varies in price. So I may have a calculator that can tell them how much it will cost for two pounds or one and a half pounds. So these are all things that we're looking for or that are useful and can provide a further positive experience for your visitors. So a couple more scenarios just to kind of drive the message home. Um, so one thing, or here are some examples of how you can make your website more user-friendly. So if I was uh, running a shoe repair shop, um, one thing that I may want to do, especially, and I know a lot of businesses did this during um, the shutdown, is they offered the opportunity for customers to upload an image of the shoes and be able to submit that so that they could get a virtual quote, okay? So that may be something that you can consider, right? If you are that type of business or offer a similar service, is create an online form where customers can upload an image of what they're, of the shoes that they're looking to get repaired and then you can provide a virtual quote. So that's a, an example of how you can make your website search friendly. And then the other is through, let's say if I was running a, a, a coffee shop, right? And actually I recommend this for any business is for you to have a frequently asked questions section. Again, I mentioned that Google loves when a website has an FAQ section. That's, in my opinion, low-hanging fruit for getting your website rankings up, okay? So a couple of just do's and don'ts, by the way, when it comes to functionality. So add positive functionality tools like what we just covered. Um, keep your forms short. So this isn't about you know them filling out a 20-page questionnaire if they're trying to get a hold of you. Make it easy for them. If you are offering an e-commerce element to your business, Make it easy for people to check out um, on your website, okay? Um, one thing that we do ask, um, and this is, you know, this is one of those things where, you know, five years ago, we were talking about making sure that you had a pop-up on your website. We're, 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 all we're saying is don't let the pop-up be the first thing that happens if somebody lands on your website. You know, make it so that maybe the pop-up appears maybe after 30 seconds, after 20 seconds, maybe the pop-up appears um, if they click a particular page. So the only thing here is pop-ups shouldn't be the first thing that we see when we land on your website, okay? Same thing with audio and video. Sometimes these audios or, or recordings um, automatically play when you land on your website. I would enable it so that you the user has to click on the on the sound or the video for it to play instead of it playing automatically. And then last but not least, I think what what happens and a, a common misconception is that we feel like we need to add everything to our website, that our website needs to look and feel like all of our marketing collateral or that we need to add really fancy graphics. And this was really popular like 10 years ago when websites became popular, right? They provided all of these visuals. And, you know, I remember going into like these fashion websites and they were like theatrical, you know, we, we don't need to do that. Okay. You know, just keep it simple. 
a simple, nice template with a lot of white space is, is actually better, okay? So no need to have fireworks and all that, okay? Great. So let's quickly talk about um, creating a website that's intuitive. And I alluded to this a little bit earlier. So if you are offering an e-commerce um, uh, option, um, I'm going to have some tips for you here. But again, this is, in my opinion, a really clean looking website. There's a really, um, there's a call to action that really stands out the minute that I, that I uh, land on your website. You know, make sure that when you do have these types of call outs on your website, that if I click on that particular section or that particular link, just make sure that it's linking to the appropriate pages. You know, you don't want to, you know, highlight that you have a fall collection and then send them to your entire catalog, right? Make sure that you're sending them to that section of that fall collection, okay? Um, tip number two is just, you know, we, we like um, uh, when you can recommend products. So if somebody purchased, you know, a coffee from Mexico, you know, maybe I recommend a coffee from like Ethiopia, right? If, if I have that in stock. So we actually like when the, when the um, uh, website, and in this case, the business owner can recommend additional products, okay? And then last but not least, um, the point of this is if you are providing like a checkout option, um, we love to see the steps ahead of time. So we don't want to like be on a page and then, you know, get sent to another page only to find out that it's like six pages or six steps to be able to check out. As you can see on the screen here on one, you know, just on one section, I can see that I have five actions to take before I can check out. Okay. So just keep this in mind when you're building out or if you are looking to um, make your website more useful. useful. Okay, so we have 10 minutes left. I'm gonna talk about search and this is gonna be particularly important for those of you that already have a website. Um, and then those of you that are looking to launch a website, um, here are some good SEO tips. So real quick, I just wanna highlight, a lot of us are familiar with this landing page and what a Google query looks like or a Google search query. But real quickly, so this is where um, customers go in type in the question, type in the topic that they're looking to research. Um, you're then gonna appear um, with text ads, right? So these are paid, right? So this is one way that um, your business can appear on search is through um, text ads or Google ads. And then we've got the organic results section, which is the gold mine. And this is where we want to be, okay? This is where a lot of businesses come to me and say, Israel, how do I improve my organic um, reach? This is what we're talking about is this gold mine, okay? Now, if you haven't already taken advantage of the business profile on Google, actually, uh, Maria and Connie, um, feel free to step in, but I believe that recording is gonna be made available um, on your website. But I did cover a whole webinar on how to create a business profile on Google which allows you to appear on Google search and maps. So I invite you to go watch that recording if you haven't, if you weren't able to catch that um, webinar. Okay, so real quick, I'm just gonna talk to you about how Google works just so that we all understand, you know, how it, how it does its job, okay? So rule number one, or the first thing I wanna call out is that Google is not the internet, okay? Google is a search engine tool that scans the internet for what you're looking for, okay? So what Google does and Google's job, okay? Because remember, Google is a business. They're in the business of helping you find what you're looking for, okay? So the best way that we could think about this is think about Google as a librarian, right? We know that librarians are really good about, you know, pointing you to the right section of the library, so you can find your book, okay? So Google is like that, but then Google takes it a step further because Google is not only gonna tell you where that book is, Google will have already read that book, okay? It would have already indexed that book. And so Google's not only gonna point you to the book, it's actually gonna point you to the exact page of what you're looking for, okay? So Google is a really powerful tool, right? It's doing this 
every second of the day. It's continually scanning websites for content. Okay. So believe it or not, there are web crawlers on your websites now that are scanning for new content. Okay. So once Google makes a copy of your website and it indexes, Google's going to say, okay, I have a pretty good idea of what this website consists of. I'm going to keep this in my back pocket if somebody's looking for whatever you're offering. Okay. Now, anytime that you can add content or freshen up your content, Google's going to be like, oh, cool. There's more stuff. Like, this is great. I love that this website has more frequently asked questions. I love that this website has more product. So just think about Google as, um, you know, that second pair of eyes on your website. They're going to index your website and they're going to do whatever it can to make sure that you appear on the search results. Okay. So the, here are some tips to help you um, appear higher on the search ranking or things that Google considers when they are ranking your website. One, how fast of a load time your, how fast your website loads. Okay. So um, if your website is taking more than 45 seconds to a minute to upload, it's not going to provide a good experience. And so users are going to go, they're going to, you know, because on top of that, we're not only particular about what we're looking for, but we're looking for, for information fast. So make sure you have a, 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 a fast load time. And I have a, a good, great resource for you to be able to test the um, load time of your website. Make sure that you are um, providing ex a positive experience across all browsers and devices. And let me share with you some tools. So test my site is a Google product. What you do here is you enter your URL. Google is then going to scour your website and then they're gonna give you a report back on um, your load time. So here, Google's not only gonna tell you whether you have a poor or a positive um, uh, load time, but it's also gonna tell you what you need to do to fix it, okay? So something that you may find in that report is that the images that you uploaded are heavy and uh, they're a heavy si uh, file size. Okay, so you go back to your website, you just decrease the file size of that image, um, which can happen. You know, sometimes we upload a raw, a raw file of an image and we forget that we should upload a mobile friend, uh, sorry, a web friendly file. So you're gonna learn things like that to help improve your, your, uh, your uh, load time. Now, the other thing too is, um, so Google Search Console is another tool that Google offers. And basically what Google Search Console does is that it's gonna alert you if you have broken links, okay? If you have or have published a new, a new let's just say I have a new blog for the month, um, you can actually um, you know, beat Google to it or actually help Google in this particular case. And you can go to, to Google Search Console and submit that link to your website to let Google know you have new content. So again, you're like two steps ahead of it, right? So you're letting Google know, hey, by the way, new information for you to digest and for you to index, here's the link, it's a new blog. You enter the URL and then Google will begin to index it just to make sure. And I always like to do this just to make sure that we know that Google has seen that we've updated our website. So lots of really great tools um, and opportunities with the Google Search Console. So last but not least, um, we always recommend that you are pointing as many, um, that all of your um, social medias and all of your online profiles are all pointing back to your website. Google loves this. This further validates to Google that you are a useful website, that people are um, able to access your website from various sources. So. Um, make sure that your URL and your website is being promoted across all your platforms. Okay. Okay, we covered a lot, but I think we're at the <laughs> top of the hour. We are. And, yeah, Israel, we have a quick question that maybe some other people I know it's come up in our other yes. webinars, you know, having an issue when um, either Google suspends the account for some reason or, you know, maybe they have a different ownership. So where could people go to ensure that, um, again, if their account was suspended or they uh, don't have access to it, how do they the do that? Business profiles. We're talking yep. about the business profiles. Okay. So it's happened to me. It's happened to my partner. In fact, it just, uh, what my partner's opening up a second location and we just did this and our account was suspended. And basically what we did is 
you know, there is a section there where you can, it may be because they're just wanting to validate that that's your business. Um, they're wanting to validate something about the business. So you could, in our particular case, we sent a photo of our new location. Um, they had suspended us because um, we had actually been sharing a, uh, an address. And so they were confused, like, okay, who's, who's owning this? Whose address is this actually? So we sent a photo, things like that. And we were actually, our suspension was lifted the next day. So okay. it's going to depend on what the, what the suspension was for. So um, Nar uh, Narayan, if you want to yeah. email me afterwards, I can help you with that. Okay. And then the, um, the uh, second question is, yes, we will share the link to the previous webinars. You will get an email for everyone that's on this call. We, uh, Maria will send a direct email to the link with today's recording, as well as the link or where you can find the other ones. But all the, um, the previous two are on the city's website. Awesome. Excellent. Okay, cool. Um, you know, maybe what we could do based on um, just feedback that I heard about the analytics, I'd be more than happy to come back at some point because we do have a whole web, a whole webinar on analytics and understanding the analytics. Um, and what we could do there is, or what that webinar presentation does is we look into the data and we talk about how to interpret that for your business. So I'd be happy to come back and, and make that part of the, the, the series, Connie. Since Perfect. I know there was yes. a couple of questions around the analytics. Yes, and we can definitely talk about that. And for everybody that, again, is on this call, um, as soon as we come up with dates with different topics, um, you're on our database and you will get an email um, letting you know when those will occur. Awesome. I know a lot of information. I know it could be like information overload, but, you know, so long as you take two or three things, you know, I'm a, I, I'm a happy guy. <laughs> Israel, do you just want to take a, like a minute or two just to wrap up quickly? And Yep. So, um, you know, just next steps. Again, we covered a lot about, you know, how you can measure the success of your website, things that you should keep in mind. So when you do get a copy of this presentation, there is this next steps. You know, I would consider this to be like a checklist, you know, things that you should mark off if you're looking to optimize your website. When you are creating your website, make sure that you're like checking, checking, checking. So. Um, that's basically the, the last of it. So, Perfect. Well, thank you, everybody. Again, you'll get a link to, to the recording. And if you have any questions or contact information, it's in there. So thank you very much. Awesome. Bye, thank you so bye much. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.